Thank you, Alison, for that lovely introduction. Uh, I can hardly wait to hear myself talk after that. <laughs> uh, I will um, start by saying that well, I hope we have some fun today and learn a few things about the local area and probably uh, dig up a few memories for you. I think um, probably the best thing to do now is to get started. I hope you enjoy and I'll look forward to questions at the end of the session. So Alison is going to put up some images for us to talk about. Uh, the first one that I'd like to discuss is the old tidal bars at San Susi. And coming up on the screen, there it is. It's uh, a photograph that was taken in 1935 for the Cogra Jubilee booklet. And at the time this photograph was taken, the council was particularly proud of this area. You can see the baths in the foreground and in the immediate background, some picnic shelters, which look very, very elegant and very enticing. Uh, and going further across to the right hand side, you can see a sandstone wall, a retaining sandstone wall that runs right, right along into the distance to um, Delaney's boat shed and, and just immediately in front of that is the punt ramp. That land that we can see there, the park, San Susi Park, was reclaimed by um, dredges. The, the wall was built and then the sand and uh, shells were dredged from the bottom of the river, the Georges River, and deposited in the park. The park was built up that way. The, the trees that you can see on the left-hand side in the background there, they formed the original shoreline. So that, that land there has all been reclaimed, was all reclaimed in 1932-33 and the park was opened. Uh, at the same time, a very, very modern uh, bathing pavilion was built at the, at the baths, which we'll see in a moment or two. But those, those baths are the second ones on, on that site. There was a, um, some bay baths there prior to this time, but the 32, 33, they were rebuilt. And uh, this was a very important part of the playground of the South. So if we can have the next slide, uh, Alison. On the other side of the peninsula, the, <clears throat> the San Susi Baths, of course, are right at the, the, the point of the San Susi Peninsula near the Olympic pool. This this set of baths uh, was on the Sandringham side. Uh, there's still baths there right now, but there's no boat shed there anymore. The boat shed, um, the original boat shed for here was, <clears throat> was built in 1903. This particular one was the one that was owned by Frank Ward in the, in the 1950s. Um, the baths were uh, remade at that time as well. And this, these bars look right out um, directly at the, um, the heads at La Perouse and Carnell. So it was a beautiful place to have a swim. Uh, you could uh, enjoy the refreshment rooms that were attached to the boat shed. You could hire a boat, uh, either a motorboat or a rowboat, and enjoy yourself on George's River. So this is also, this was called Pilgrim's Baths. Most people uh, in recent times have known it as Pilgrim's. Uh, it was owned by, in 1903 by Fred Selman, who was the son of Amos Selman, and Amos Selman was one of the great pioneers of the, the San Susi area. He came to San Susi at a time when uh, there was nothing even remotely like this. There were, were no houses. Amos Selman had a house in what was to become Clairville Avenue, but his house was simply in the bush. So this particular bathing and, and boating site um, plays a very important part in the history of our peninsula. I think that um, we can probably go on to the next one now if we can. 
And this is an image of the same boat shed, the one that we were just looking at, at least it was on the same site. Uh, but this is the, the original one that um, Amos Selman built for his son, Fred Selman. You know, and it goes back to, this is the one that goes right back to 1903. I love this photograph. Uh, I think it's it's a very charming photograph of the times. It shows a sort of a bush setting that the uh, boat sheds and, and uh, baths were surrounded by. You can see a very a small Norfolk Island pine there, but we know now that those Norfolk Island pines at Sandringham are huge. And uh, that one, that particular one there, was one that was planted for by Amos Selman for Fred Selman's uh, birth, to commemorate his birth. And it's still there, and it's an enormous, uh, enormous, enormous tree. You can see refreshments are available. You can see oysters are available. Um, they had cold drinks there, ice. And this particular boat shed uh, at Sandringham was very close to the Prince of Wales Hotel, which we'll see a bit later on this morning. And People that visited the Prince of Wales Hotel were also surrounded by a picnic ground and pleasure ground, and that extended right across the park to this boat shed. So it was a part of the complex and a very, very successful business for quite a long time. We can go on now if we like to um, something very important, and that's the cover of my book. Um, the, the book, this book was published in 2015. You can see the title, uh, Baths and Boat Sheds, uh, the Waterfront Community at San Susie, 1895 to 1965. And I chose to put on the cover of the book, the, um, the bathing pavilion that I was talking about earlier when we looked at the first image. That bathing pavilion for 1933 was a very, very modern, a piece of architecture. It was something that was um, <clears throat> original, that style, I should say, was originated in California, uh, it was called Modern. It was part of the Art Deco um, movement. Um, Art Deco was um, involved with painting and glass making and so on, but also with architecture. And this building was built with, on the premise that uh, the horizontal lines which should prevail. You can, you can see that, you can pick that up very quickly in, in, the, uh, in the building. To the right of the, the building is a, a wonderful uh, Morton Bay fig, which is still there. Unfortunately, that bathing pavilion was knocked down in the last few months, demolished. Uh, it had concrete cancer. It hadn't been used really since the 19. 60s anyway, and so it was deemed by the council to be unfit for de development or occupation, and it no longer exists. I'm pleased to say, however, that the, the Morton Bay fig tree does still stand, and it will serve as a reminder always of the, um, the placement of the original San Susi bars. This, this pavilion, 1933, and the bars 1933. Um, the first image we looked at today when we were looking <clears throat> towards the to the towards the east from this bar uh, showed the surrounds. This one uh, shows the bars themselves. Right in the in the foreground, you can see uh, two prongs sticking up. There's a walkway there, and uh, those are the handles of a ladder. I remember that as well because my sisters taught me to swim at these bars and their method of teaching was pretty primitive. They just threw me in the water and hoped that I would scramble back to the, the steps, to those, <laughs> those uh, steps there. So they take an important place in my life. Oh, just one second. Sorry, my phone was ringing. Um, Yep, and, and I've overlaid that with the image of a boat shed, which you can see in the bottom right-hand corner of that picture. That boat shed we'll talk about in a minute because that, 
that is a particularly important photograph as well in uh, in the history of San Susi. But I I can't stress enough how important uh, this image is and and the book. I should say the book's available for sale if you want to buy the book. It's there's uh, 140 pages, A4 pages. It's thirty dollars, and you can buy it uh, by just sending me an email, Gary at GaryDarby.com. So um, I hope you enjoy the talk, and if you want to go further with it and delve into a lot more detailed information, particularly about the baths and boat tents of San Susi and uh, general San Susi history, this is the book to have. That's a pretty good commercial, I think. We should perhaps go on to the next image. This, um, this boat shed, a very, uh, I think, a wonderful style boat shed, was built by a man called Peter John Bellman. And uh, Peter Bellman uh, was a um, master mariner. He came from Germany and um, he, he, was, he worked as a mariner before he settled down at San Susi, he lived at San Susi, and he opened this boat shed before the first San Susi baths were open. In fact, he, he Peter Bellman, had a hand in the construction of the baths. They were made by um, the three Peters, Peter Bellman, Peter Moore, who had the Moorfields race course, and Peter Herman, who was a, a German market gardener, and uh, an Amir of Cogra. So this, the baths became known as the Three Peters Baths, and Peter John Bellman was one of the Peters. I'm not sure whether that's him with the rifle over his shoulder, but you can see how rural things were in that time. He was probably out shooting kangaroos or something. But you could have, at his baths also, there were oysters, and uh, we stress this because oysters were part of the holiday atmosphere of the place. People came down to the peninsula deliberately to, uh, to buy and to eat oysters. You can see the word summer drinks on the, on the front of the boat. Seat. And you can also see the owner's name, PJ Bellman, just after the word shed. I hope everybody can make that out. This, um, this particular shed was important to a group of Aboriginal people who lived around in Cogra Bay, or at least they camped around in Cogra Bay. And these, um, these folks were workers on the Holt Estate, which is on the other side of the river in the background of that photograph. Uh, and they, they worked on the oyster leases. One or two of them used to walk around from Cogra Bay uh, on an occasional day and wait here for people that had come down the Rocky Point Road uh, and people that had come down and wanted to go across to the other side. The Aboriginal people would row them across uh, for a shilling and return. So an important part of the area. We should move on, I think, or we'll run out of time today. We'll go now to uh, yet another boat shed. This is one owned by George Hughes. George Hughes, a very important man in the area. You can see written on the... Uh, face of that building, St George Sailing Club. And the date at the top looks like 1924, but it's uh, that's a, whoever wrote that got the year wrong. It's 1927. And in 1927, this became the first clubhouse for St George Sailing Club. So part of the leisure activities of the area was sailing. Uh, and this, this building uh, is stood right close to that huge Morton Bay fig, which you can see on the right of the photograph. And you can also see the bars in the background. Also in the background is a steamer called the SS Erina. You can see that, that tied up to the, there was a wharf beside the bars and the Erina's tied up there taking on passengers. The, she would take passengers out to Cornell or La Paris or to Brighton on a circular run. And, and uh, the owner, Thomas Charles, did that for some 25 years. It was part of the leisure uh, attractions for the area. People would come down to take a steamer ride around the bay or follow the sailing. We can go now to the next image if we can. This is a, another book that I had a, a small hand in and you can see at the bottom uh, it's by Lou Bond with, with myself, Memories of Aquaflora Park. Uh, I don't think there's anybody old enough watching today to remember Aquaflora. 
because um, it it finished in uh, 1956. Oh, we might we might get a few people in. The um, th this was run by a man called Albert Royce, who um, uh, formerly had owned a milk bar and chocolate factory out in the western suburbs, but he lived in San Susi at, at, in the 1930s, and he decided to build a private zoo. Uh, and in the end, he had a zoo which not only included animals, but included uh, 50 goldfish ponds. Uh, he had orchids there. Bro Royce was a, a prominent orchid grower. Uh, he had a wonderful little cafe there which sold a, a, a memorable scones with jam and cream. There were kangaroos, native birds, monkeys, and, and you name it. Um, this, this park, Aquaflora Park, was situated on the corner of Clearwell Avenue and Ida Street, for those of you who know the San Susie. It's not there now, but the um, San Susie child mining building is, is on the site of Aquaflora Park. In 1935, uh, two years after this opened, international visitors came to Sydney on a ship called the Franconia, and one of them was the songwriter Cole Porter. And Cole Porter remembered coming out to Aquaflora Park at San Susie. Spectacular, spectacular place. You can see how the larger goldfish golf, ponds there in the centre. We'll move along if we can to the next image, which is we're going pretty well. Um, this is the Clairville Hall, which was before Aquaflora Park was built. This hall was facing onto Clairville Avenue in Sandringham, the largest, and it says there, the largest seaside pleasure grounds out of Sydney. And this was in a very prominent spot right in the middle of the San Susi Peninsula. The Clairville Hall uh, was demolished in the 1930s, unfortunately, but it was a great place for people to, um, to go and take uh, a picnic or play cricket. Large companies met there. And that hall, believe it or not, was said to hold 500 people. They had dancers and, uh, and uh, all sorts of things in that hall, all sorts of meetings, I should say. So Clearville Hall uh, was an important part of um, San Susie and very prominent in Clearville Avenue. We can go to the next if we can. The next image is this one. Excuse me for a second. Oh, this is sorry. This is the Clairville uh, picnic ground, which was stood behind that building we're just looking at. It's a photograph by Joseph Frankenshire, who was a very prominent local photographer. But you can see that that area was steeped in uh, things to keep people happy. So now we can go to the next shot if we, if we could. We're back at Aquaflora Park actually just momentarily with this young lady, uh, apprehensive young lady, I should say, feeding a kangaroo having a new experience and a uh, protective father looking on. But that just gives you a sort of a context shot of um, what Aquaflora Park was all about. We'll go to the next one. St George Sailing Club. This is the building from 1932. The, a lot of fancy locals will know that there was, um, uh, uh, this is the second, uh, or the third actually, uh, uh, sailing club. And um, sorry, the second, the third one has just been demolished to make way for the fourth one. And there's a fourth St George Sailing Club going up at the moment. This is the 1932 building. But in the background, <coughs> excuse me, the photograph must have been taken about 1964 or five. In the background, you can see the beginnings of the Captain Cook Bridge, which gives you a good sense of exactly where that uh, photograph is taken. So the next. While we're talking about sailing, it would be remiss not to mention Billow Hayward. In the top right hand corner of that picture is Billow Hayward, who was uh, a, a champion, 16 foot and 18 foot sailor, both on George's River and Botany Bay. And, and indeed, uh, Billow Hayward won the World 18 Foot Sailing Championship in Auckland in, uh, in 1946. 
He won 17 uh, St George Sailing Club championships and numerous other championships. He was unbeatable on the bay. I've spoken to a lot of, I used to sail a little bit myself, but I've spoken to people who knew Bill O'Haywood and sailed with him, and they say that he could have rigged up a bathtub with a bed sheet and still beaten most of the boats on the bay. He was that good. He got his knowledge from uh, being a, um, an oyster farmer. He knew all about the tides and the currents and the winds, and uh, he had a, a small amount of Aboriginal heritage, which probably worked in his favour. Uh, in terms of uh, communicating with nature. And he was uh, a, a great part of leisure and pleasure on San Susie. And you can see his boat, Neptune 6, there skimming along at great speed. So we'll go to the next one if we can. <clears throat> this is the wonderful um, Prince of Wales Hotel. It was built not this building, but there was the first Prince of Wales Hotel was on this site in 1868. 1868, that's going well back. It was well before there were any decent roads in the area and people used to come by horse and cart from Sydney to come down here to these picnic grounds. You can see the words hotel and picnic ground Sandringham written on the bottom of the photograph. And they're the extensive photo photograph, sorry, extensive picnic grounds that I was talking about previously. Uh, you can see the Norfolk Island pines in the background here. And just out of shot on the left of this picture is the Selman boat shed. So you can see how close that was. This is the hotel that eventually morphed into Mick Moylands. And for any San Susi residents, or from people from a long way away for that matter, knew about Mick Moylands. So if we can go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> This is the beer garden, rough and ready as it is. Uh, pine trees in the background. The old Prince of Wales Hotel, or part of it anyway, you can see on the right. Mick, Mick had a, um, a complex about people stealing these beer glasses. And you can see a sign there right in the middle of the picture. Uh, stolen glasses, 20 pound fine. He, he got so tired of having the beer glasses stolen that he decided that he would find anybody that stole one 20 pounds, which was an enormous amount of money in the 1950s and 60s. Uh, that, that structure, I won't call it a building, but on the left side of that building was the beer garden. It had a dirt floor with tables, um, uh, pretty rough tables. And, and that's where a lot of the activity took place in Mix uh, Hotel. That's on the outside. We'll have a look at the inside now if we can. This is the, um, the infamous six o'clock swill. I don't know whether people have read about this or not, but uh, there was a, a law passed that hotels needed to close at six o'clock. So those chaps in the background were drinking as many schooners of beer as, as they could before six o'clock. And Mick was famous for this, um, this time. You can see uh, that the two tools in operation. And one in the background's got <clears throat> eight shillings and two pence on the on the screen. And that's before decimal currency, of course. Mick Moylan uh, bought this hotel in 1952 off a character called Lousy Les Ritchie. And that people knew that hotel from that name. So just to give you an insight into um, the inside of the famous Mick Moylan's. We Harry, go, we're coming up to time, so um, yeah, we can go along a bit. Well, can we go through then to um, let's see uh, number sixteen on my list, the Punt and Bridge. We might have to skip through a few. No, just keep going. Oh, that that's good. That's good. Uh, that's a, a bridge, uh, the bridge, uh, Captain Cook Bridge uh, in progress in 1964. And in the foreground is the punt, which had run from 1916 to that time and finished in 1965. Uh, there it is, uh, communication or transport, I should say, in the San Susi area. Can we go to the next one, please? Steam trams uh, ran along Rocky Point Road between uh, 1887 and 
This is going up Fitzgerald Hill, um, Barton Street in the background. We go to the next. Turn says you know, the, the trams went around a great loop in the, uh, the in, in the southern part of the southern uh, the peninsula, and that became known as the loop. And I'd like to finish on the next slide, I think. Oh no, sorry, we're just one. This is the trolley bus and, and uh, trams. Um, the trolley bus is taking over from the trams in 1937, in the, right in the middle of Cogra. Steam tram on the right, the new electric trolley buses on the left. And the next. Yeah, final slide, uh, the loop. This is by Joseph Brackenshire, and I think it's a delightful picture. The little girls in the uh, in the middle of the picture there, the girl, little girl on the left is the photographer's daughter. I happened to have the pleasure of interviewing her in 1988 when she was an old lady. And she told me that her father, the photographer, had asked her to stand there with her friend and not move. Stand, <laughs> stand like a statue until the tram came along. So Joseph Brackenshire, a very, very, very uh, accomplished photographer, just clicked the shutter right at the right moment. And he captured something of the great joys and pleasures of San Susie. So I'm finished on that note. I'll hand back to Alison. <laughs>